Welcome to an explanation video about the background in Blender. Quite a bit of people reached out to me with questions about exactly that. I made a one minute video of how to change that background, but it lacks explanation because its purpose was to be really quick. In this video I will tidy up a bit and explain Blender's background more detailed. So at first let's look at the background. For that you have to go in the rendered view and because my background is transparent by default I have to uncheck the transparency option in the render settings. So now the background looks just dark grey. To take a closer look on the background color we have to open the shader editor. Here you can see the material or shader of the selected cube. But it is not what we are looking for which is the background or world shader. So we switch the shader editor to world in the top menu. Now here we can see the origin of the dark grey color of the background. Here is a background node with this color selected. And here you can select your background color of wish. Now you can see that your whole world is just this color. If you ask yourself why is it connected to the surface input of the world output node, the world is basically just a big sphere or ball around your whole scene and the inner surface of this ball is what you see right now. To show you what I mean, I will just recreate my world in my scene as a little model. I just create a sphere which will represent the Blender world. Then I cut a little hole in there to see the inside of my world. There sits my little cube. Now I want to change the material of the sphere. For that I switch my shader editor back to object and set up a material for my sphere. The world in Blender is emissive, like a big LED screen, so I only need an emission shader for my world sphere. And here you can see that I created a little world or background in my scene. A sphere around my scene and I can change the color of that world sphere. You do nothing else with the background node in the world shader editor. But in CGI or 3D you won't use just one color for your whole scene world, because in the real world this never happens. Instead you use an image of the surrounding world to project that in your scene. These images are called HDR spheres and are pretty distorted because they have to look realistic on a sphere. So I add an image texture to load an image in my shader editor. If I don't load an image in this node it will just show a pink color. So I just open an image from my computer. I can show you the image I'm using that you can see how an HDR sphere image looks. Here you can see the distortion which is necessary to use them on a sphere. So now you can see that my cube gets lighted pretty realistic in comparison to before. Only white light is just not realistic enough, but an image like this makes it more believable. Of course you need different HDR spheres for different scenes, whatever fits your scene. Alright, now I will just recreate the same thing in the world shader editor. But here I have to use an environment texture instead of the image texture. So as you can see now, the cube's lighting is almost the same as in my little world model. You could adjust the strength of the world light a bit with a background node. Another big use case for these HDR spheres is the reflection of the environment. Because if I now add a reflective object like a mirroring metal ball, it will reflect the world light, which is this image of the room. Here is an example for this effect. And if you are fine with the background looking like this, or you want to use just a single color like white, it's perfectly fine. But sometimes you want to use a different material for the background and the lighting for the objects. Let's say you want a plain color for the background, but you want to keep the object's lighting from the room image, especially for the reflection on the ball. You could solve this as well in the post-production or compositor, but this is the shader approach to it. In this case you have to tell Blender that you want to use different materials for different pixels. And you can do that with the light path node. And the mixing itself is done with the mix shader node. Here you plug both shaders into the input of the mixing node. The order is very important because this node reads from top to bottom. The top plug is 0 and the bottom plug is 1. So your background color has to be in the bottom plug and your object's lighting influence has to be in the top plug. I will explain that in a second. Now you can mix these two shaders just with a factor slider and just fade from one into the other. 
but that's not what we want. We want the pixels of the object use the first shader and the pixels of the background use the second shader. And here comes the light path node into play. Because simplified, camera rays are the pixels of the visible background. And at these pixels, this node's output is 1, and on object pixels, the output of this node is 0. The mix shader node then just chooses the background shader dependent on that. In short, pixels where objects are will get the HDR background, and pixels where nothing is will get the orange background. Which you can see here, that every object has the lighting of the HDR image and everything else is just orange. You could switch the plugs to invert the distribution that only objects have the orange background lighting. And for example, if you would just plug the image color to the color input of the second background node, it will basically look like you would have just plugged the image directly to the output. Because you are mixing the same data, which won't make any sense. So I hope this video helped to understand the World Shader Editor and you now know how to set up your scenes. If this was helpful to you, feel free to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Have fun shaping your world and see you soon.